Cancun All One Radio, the talk show podcast station, bringing you daily health and information, where daily health is viewed as an ever-changing reality. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. This is Daily Health. Now, all information and resources are based on the views of the host, unless otherwise noted. All information is intended to make you encourage and inspire positive change and a happier lifestyle. This podcast contains some quotations, images, and or excerpts from copyrighted material. These uses fall well within the copyright doctrine of fair use. Good morning and welcome. This is Let's Talks Daily Health. I am your host, Tony Williams. Daily Health is presented by On One Radio talk show podcast station and today we are talking about um, depression signs and what what can help a lot has been going on in 2020 as well as the years before that but 2020 for the most part has been very very challenging and has affected millions of people especially with depression so what what is depression? What are the symptoms? What are the signs? And what can help? Well, and this is something that requires a medical diagnosis. But depression is the persistent feeling of sadness or loss of interest that characterizes major depression, which can lead to a range of behavioral as well as physical symptoms. These may include Changes in sleep, appetite, energy level, concentration, daily behavior, or self-esteem. Depression can also be associated with thoughts of suicide. Now, these are all the things that we really want to prevent because we want everyone to live a happy, happy and healthy life. So, what are the signs and symptoms? Well, I just named a couple, but let's break it down a little bit mood. People may experience anxiety, apathy, general discontent, guilt, hopelessness, loss of interest or pleasure in activities, mood swings or sadness. Behavioral. People may experience agitation, excessive crying, irritability, restlessness or social isolation sleep people may also experience early awakening excessive sleepiness insomnia or even restless sleep whole body people may have to endure excessive hunger fatigue or loss of appetite it also affects the cognitive and lack of concentration, slowness, slowness in activity, or thoughts of suicide, which some people have experienced. Weight, weight gain, or weight loss. And it's also common for poor appetite or repeatedly going over thoughts. So, with those in mind, Have you experienced some of those things or have you witnessed someone else experiencing those things? Those are all signs as well as symptoms of a health issue going on there. And you really want to be able to do something about those things. So what are there are four types of depression so what are they they are major depression persistent depressive disorder bipolar disorder seasonal affective disorder psychotic depression Mm -hmm. postpartum depression premenstrual dysphoric disorder and situational depression So, what is the number one cause of depression? Well, research suggests that depression doesn't spring 
from simply having too much or too little of certain brain chemicals. Rather, there are many possible causes of depression, including faulty mood regulation by the brain, genetic vulnerability, stressful life events, medications, as well as medical problems. So what can we do about it? Well, we can do things like find hobbies, we can speak to someone, um, you can seek a therapist, um, you can talk to your doctor. So what can, what can also help? Well, I ran across an article that talks about vitamin D, which can help treat depression. And it was very interesting to me, and I felt that I'd like to share that with you all. Because it's something that we can all do to help ourselves or give this information to someone and help someone else. So vitamin D is famous for helping our bodies build strong bones, but research has shown that it could help ease the symptoms of depression. Now, it's been nicknamed the Sunshine Vitamin. Vitamin D's moniker is enough to bring a smile to your face. And as it turns out, vitamin D might help boost your mood in other ways as well. And this is something that they've been working on. And it was actually discovered in April of 2014 and was written about in the journal nu Nutrients. Researchers found that people who took vitamin D supplements saw an improvement in their symptoms of depression. And that the effect of taking a supplement was comparable to that of taking an antidepressant. So if you're someone who are kind of leery of taking antidepressants, this is one that you can, you can try. You can get vitamin D over the counter or if you prefer, you can talk to your doctor about it. Now, another review published in April of 2014 in the Journal of Psychosomatic Medicine, it was a less, it was a bit less conclusive, but it did indicate that among people with more severe depression, taking extra vitamin D seemed to help ease their symptoms. Backing up other research indicating that supplements might be less useful for people whose depression isn't so severe. There is some research to show that our levels of vitamin D can impact cognitive function and also that vitamin D supplementation may help improve symptoms of depression in people who already have a deficiency. Trouble is, quite a few of us, approximately 40%, simply aren't getting enough vitamin D. According to a study published in June of 2018 in the journal Curious. So how much you get depends on where you live. So if you live in an area that, well, doesn't get quite a bit of sunshine, you might need a little help there. Or if you're the type of person who just doesn't go outside much, sunshine could be a thing that could definitely help as well because it helps your body process. So, it might be a good idea to get a vitamin D boost. And add to that the fact that vitamin D is found naturally in only a few foods, including fatty fish, salmon and tuna, some mushrooms, and in smaller amounts in egg yolks, cheese, and beef liver. Fortified foods including cow's milk, milk alternatives, soy, oat, and many cereals have much more of the fat soluble vitamins. So how do you tell whether you're getting in too little and how to up the intake? Well first we have to discover who's getting too little of vitamin D. 
To find out if you're low in vitamin D, you'll need to get a blood test. A review of 30 nmol, which is nanomoles per liter or under, is too low. And anything over 125 is too high. The aim is for 50 or slightly above. And that's according to the National Institute of Health Office of Dietary Supplements. Some people are at higher risk of vitamin D deficiency, including those with darker skin. Darker skin contains more melanin, the pigment that gives skin its color, and more melanin makes it harder for skin to produce the vitamin from sunlight. So there's definitely an interesting fact there. All my people of color should get checked. I would say fairly regular. If you're going to the doctor every year, then you're already getting that checked. If you're not, speak to your doctor about it. Inquire about it. Ask questions. People who are lactose intolerant, like me, have trouble consuming lactose, a protein found in milk and milk products, may also be less likely to get enough vitamin D. Since fortified milk is an important dietary source of it, according to the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Disease, African Americans, Hispanic Latinos, American Indians, and Asian Americans are more likely to be lactose intolerant than people of European descent. Now, other groups are higher risk according to the ODS. Older adults, and that's simply because as we age, our skin doesn't synthesize vitamin D as efficient, efficiently. People who are obese, which is greater amounts of fat traps, vitamin D, possibly interfering with how much of the vitamin can circulate in the body, as well as anyone who has difficulty absorbing fat, such as those with inflammatory bowel disease or celiac disease or who have had gastric bypass surgery. Individuals who do not spend time outdoors or do not expose their skin are at a higher risk. So there's some information for you there on, on who is possibly not getting enough vitamin D. So take that into account and check with your doctor on that ask them questions after all this is about your health and you want to make sure you're listening to your body so should you take a vitamin d supplement well the ods recommends that adults age 19 to 70 get 15 micrograms which translate into 600 international units or iu daily you may be getting this amount already if you take a multivitamin. But for a lot of people, they don't see the importance or just, it just hadn't crossed their minds that they should be taking a, a multivitamin. But before you take anything, be sure to speak with your doctor. That way you can be, you know, on the same page with your healthcare provider. Now, start by getting more Vitamin D from sunlight and fortified foods such as milk alternatives and cereals if you can. In order for vitamin D to be well absorbed, it needs to be taken with the source of fat. Now when it comes to increasing your time in the sun, the ODS says there's no clear answer about how to balance exposure with cancer risk, but points out that most people don't need much sunlight exposure to make enough vitamin D. And while sunscreen is essential in helping prevent skin cancer, keep in mind that it also blocks some of the sun's UVB rays, which your body needs to make vitamin D. So as we can see, vitamin D is famous for helping our bodies build strong bones, but research has also shown that it could help ease the symptoms of depression. So speak to your doctor, um, it needs to be, depression should be diagnosed by 
a doctor, of course. But there are several self-tests that you can actually do at home if you feel like you want to do that before speaking with your doctor. But this is something important that could help not only you, but your family and those, those generations to come. And as I always say, daily health is an ever-changing reality. So as time goes on, things change. Um, we learn more as we evolve. And taking care of your health is a big deal. And it should be treated as such. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So if you have depression, look into your vitamin D levels. Get a little more sun. I know it may seem a little difficult right now with the pandemic going on, but you can still go outside. There's fresh air. You can soak up a little sun, especially since it's winter time. And it's getting to the point to where it's about to be too cold. And when it's cold, nobody really likes to be outside unless it's those who enjoy and love the cold weather. So if you're not a cold weather lover, definitely look into taking a multivitamin if you are not already doing so. But if you are already taking a multivitamin, kudos to you. Spread the word. Health is important. This has been your daily health. Thank you.